President Biden leaves the White House tomorrow, Marine One to Andrews Air Force Base, and from there he heads to Detroit. He'll be on the picket lines with the United Auto Workers. On that flight route, he will come very close, if not precisely, to flying over East Palestine, Ohio, a place that he has promised over and over to visit, and he has not. Because, of course, if you took the word of the U.S. government, things are just fine in East Palestine. In fact, the street along Norfolk Southern's main line is fully reopening today. Never mind the weird illnesses plaguing the town, never mind the independent tests confirming toxins. We've broken those stories here on News Nation. Never mind Mr. Biden's unfulfilled promise of visiting the town. And never mind the fact that it took the Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg 10 days to fully even acknowledge the disaster. Chris Cuomo has spent the day on the ground in East Palestine. He's doing his show from there tonight and tomorrow uh, and is joining us now with a preview. Hi, Chris. How you doing? That's why I have on my nifty News Nation field shirt. Uh, it was a very depressing day here in East Palestine, mm -hmm. uh, going around, uh, having all the questions just fall on your head, uh, literally being greeted with what has been described as this sweet chemical smell. Uh, I'd only heard about it, and today I thought it was like my mind was playing tricks on me, that I was smelling it, you know what I mean, like the power of suggestion. And then someone who lives on the street, in fact, I think you showed her house, um, right in the backyard of where the uh, chemicals were lit on fire, uh, said, oh, no, I'm smelling it today. I just called the hotline. I haven't smelled it like this in months, and maybe it's because of what they're digging up as part of their remediation. But look, there's a lot going on here. Norfolk Southern has a lot of resources. They're pumping a lot of money in, but that doesn't mean there aren't questions. First of all, you have a significant oversight problem on the ground here. I've been doing this a long time, Leland. I've never seen a situation where the federal government could be involved where they are less involved than what I see here. Now, they'll say, well, it's not an emergency declaration area. So that's why. But why isn't it? There are a lot of questions, Leland, a lot of questions. Why do you think these folks have seemingly been left in behind and forgotten about by the administration? When, when you talk to folks on the ground, wh what do they say about that? Why is it so important and why have you made this such a, a cornerstone of your show to cover? It's only, it's only a couple of hundred, maybe a thousand people in the town that are left. Um, you know, well, look, I mean, they have four or five thousand people. I mean, not everybody can be here right now, even though the EPA uh, stop the evacuation some five or six days after the tragedy. Look, I see East Palestine as a metaphor, uh, that there are East Palestines all over this country. I'm not saying that they're trained derailments and exploded chemicals all over the country, but uh, there are places that feel that they're being left behind, people who uh, feel disaffected and forgotten and not cared about. And that's the job of government, is to make everybody feel that they're going to matter if their time comes. You take care of the people in places where they can't take care of themselves. That's the job of government. And I see this as a failure. Now, I understand why a Democratic White House has kept arm's length from this. I get it. They didn't come right away. It's a ruby red area. Trump got in there. Uh, it didn't seem that it made sense. There wasn't an emergency declaration. No one was dead. Mm. I get it. But politics is not the end analysis of humanity and leadership. And literally, as you noted, the president's going to be 150 miles from here or so tomorrow. And instead of coming here after he goes to Detroit, he's going to San Francisco for fundraisers. Why not just come here and make a stop and let the people know you care? Why not do it? Yeah. yeah look, we asked the questions, and at the times when um, government fails, that's when the media steps in. And you've made this a a hallmark of your show, an important one. Uh, we'll see what happens with the beard tomorrow. I'm, I'm curious about that. Um, we'll be watching when the beard Chris goes, Cuomo's brother. Live. The beard All goes. Right. Oh, well, you, you ruined my team. I was only Come wearing on. I was trying the beard. To get the people to watch. I was. All right. I was only wearing it until you got engaged. Now that you're engaged, that's it. I can get rid of it. <laughs> Welcome to the club, brother. The water's warm. Thank you. Well, uh, yeah, here's the thing. I'm not sure who was more surprised, uh, she that I asked or I that she said yes. So we'll deal with that at a later, a later time. Uh, you anchor live from East Palestine tomorrow, uh, talking with the community, fighting for answers and help after the devastating train derailment. Uh, we know you've got a great uh, panel and show lined up, 8 p.m. Eastern here on News Nation. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button.
to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.